the bulls will say, look at this jobs report. Look at the wage growth. We're not in recession. The bears will say, jobs is a lagging indicator. The forward indicators aren't looking so hot. Which one is it? Well, it's all of the above. I think what's important is that we enter the year with some momentum. We still have that momentum. It will dissipate as we get into the year, and the Fed's going to need to deal with that. And that's one of the reasons why they slowed down the pace of high rate hikes to two instead of four this year and from two to three in 2019. I also think we'll probably only get one rate hike this year, and I do expect to see the Fed actually reversing course by the end of the year. But for now, the Federal Reserve can sort of put aside some of the criticism that that they've gotten to the barrage of criticism and say, listen, we're responding to what we're seeing and it's appropriate at the moment. And I think the idea that Chairman Powell will continue to monitor the economy and monitor financial conditions along with overall economic conditions is the key here. He's got to really walk that tight wire of saying, acknowledging what was a robust end of the year and things we welcome, wages picking up. That's just something you really want to embrace at this stage of the game. Though I think you should emphasize the word monitor. David, it feels like we're in this epic war between the market and the Fed. Totally different expectations for policy in 2019. Who's going to win? Well, I think the Fed may actually revise what they thought even since from their December 18th meeting. Because remember, what's happened since then is we've seen oil prices fall further. It now looks like inflation is going to stay well below their 2% target throughout 2019. Also, you know, this, this decline in market values, I mean, one of the big problems they had is asset bubbles. Well, we've done a lot to reduce asset bubbles in, in the last six weeks. So I think the Fed may do at most one rate hike this, this year. I think that it would be justified for them to be more dovish based on how much the market has fallen because of market volatility, because of lower inflation. But the other thing, you know, there's been a lot of talk about momentum investing in the last few weeks. I think what we're seeing here is momentum economics. Because we have this, mm -hmm. these two very strong quarters in the middle of the year. That's what's really producing this, these job gains. But that's going to follow through to strong gains in real wages in the first quarter. We're already seeing that uh, with low oil prices and strong wage gains. That's going to support consumer spending. And that reduces the risk of recession. So I'm pretty happy about where the economy is. And I think markets are just being too pessimistic here. Though we have a very, very strong oil economy now. So the calculus isn't that straightforward on that one. Catherine. We've got a lot of data points to go through. Strong jobs, warning from Apple, weaker manufacturing. Put it all together for us into some kind of narrative about what 2019 looks like. Well, I think what we're looking at is a, uh, a difference in the domestically oriented economy. The, you said Disney had 55,000 there uh, over the vacation period. That's, that comes from people having higher wages, being employed, uh, and that is the part of the economy that is domestically oriented. And frankly, they're not really looking at a China. They're not really looking at the financial market turmoil. On the other hand, you have Apple. Apple is very much engaged with China, very much engaged with financial engineering as part of their overall strategy. And so you have these two different economies, one domestically oriented, not financially market engaged. That's very strong. We've seen that in the data. And then you have another part of the economy that is more oriented towards financial markets, more oriented towards the external economies. And those businesses are the ones that are uh, suffering a little bit uh, with this uh, equity market uh, uh, meltdown. So we'll see how those two pieces of the economy come together in 2019. And I think what we're looking at is the momentum coming from the job market and from consumption and from investment in order to deal with very tight labor markets, that that will power the economy longer than many people on the financial markets think. You know, uh, the job market is hot, but uh, mortgages right now, mortgage volume at an 18 year low. And when you have people checking their 401k balances right now, it may hit them in the gut where it hurts that instead of feeling wealthy when they look at their investments in the stock market, instead they wonder, should I spend the money on vacation right now? We're a consumer economy, Diane. Where do you see consumer confidence playing out in 2019? You know, this is really interesting is where the biggest movement in wages have been has been at the low end of the wage spectrum in recent years. And this just got another lift up with the wage gains we saw in December. And I think that's really important because these are earners that maybe once were earning middle income jobs. They now are earning low wage, lower wage jobs in lower wage jobs, but finally getting increases. And those consumers are seeing lower prices at the pump. They do not have the 401ks that the rest of the consumers see. We are less invested 
in the stock market than we were prior to the crisis. And those consumers are willing to spend and kick it up a little bit. And that's where we saw, in fact, I was at Disneyland myself out in California and at Disney World um, during the holidays. And let me tell you, it was packed. And it always amazes me what people can afford, but they're also getting different kinds of payment than me walking in one day with my family. They're getting, you know, passes that go the whole year. They're getting discounts because they live in the area. And I think that's really important to see is this low end of the wage cycle really broadening out retail spending and broadening out the wage gains we're seeing out there. So that's helping. On the downside of it, we'll see whether or not we can really hold that together in the face of this international wave that's negative.